Hey guys, in this week's episode, I'm gonna. Hey guys, in this week's episode, I'm gonna show you how to do speech bubbles in Clip Studio EX. It's actually easier, in my opinion, to do this in Clip Studio because it was pretty much made for it. It is possible to use Photoshop to do speech bubbles, and if you're interested in doing that or don't have this program, then check out last week's episode because that is exactly what I talk about. You can find the link for that in the caption below or up in the corner right here. So without further ado, let's jump into Clip Studio EX and I will show you the step-by-step -step process for doing speech bubbles. Doing speech bubbles in Clip Studio Paint is actually incredibly intuitive. First things first, clip the text button and then make sure you have the text option highlighted because there's a lot of options under that text button and then just write what it is that you need to write. The next step is to go back to the text tool and choose the ellipse balloon tool that we're just gonna like surround our text with. It doesn't have to be exact, so don't worry. Reason it doesn't have to be exact is because there's this tool called the operation button and the operation button not only lets you move specific nodes around, but it lets you move like the text around as well as the entire speech bubble combo. So with this one single tool, we can do so much to our speech bubble and customize it as much as we want. Now to add a tail, you go back to where the option was for the text and the balloons and you see the tail option and you just kind of like drag it from your balloon. I'm gonna try doing a curved balloon now. This is actually my, my preference for making shapes for balloons and text bubbles. Um, this time I started with the balloon and I'm doing the text next. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the operation button and I'm going to just kind of drag it over after I finished formatting it. Because you do have to format it by hand. You do have to like kind of space it out so that there's line breaks kind of where you desire them to be. This takes a bit of um, trial and error. So don't, don't worry about that if it's seeming a bit clunky because that's just how it is. I'll show you just one more example of how easy it is. Um, you can even connect speech bubbles if you just use that ellipse speech bubble and just overlap it and it automatically connects. It is so easy to do trailing speech bubbles. You can use the tail to connect other speech bubbles and have even more trailing speech bubbles if you wanted to. I choose to instead point it to a rabbit face, but you can actually, it's very manipulatable. You can, you can change the length of the tail with that same tool that we used before, the operation tool. And here I am making one more curved balloon just to show you another example. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the text tool, write in what I want to. Notice how the text is all one layer. Like this is all together. It's all very organized and very grouped and easy to manipulate. It's, it's such a good tool for doing speech bubbles, Clip Studio EX. And you can adjust the size and the thickness in your sub menus. And then what I'm going to do is use the operation tool, which as you can probably tell, I really like the operation tool and I'm just going to adjust it and make it a bit more organic looking. And again, if I wanna make an attached speech bubble, I just go in and I, I draw something that connects to it and it automatically connects. It's a lot simpler than it is to do in Photoshop. There's fewer buttons to click around with. And then format your text. Move it around as a object if you want to with the operation tool. And yeah, speech bubble text operation tool. And that is like everything you need to do. Just rinse and repeat those options. And those are all available in the left hand menu bar. So there are some more moody choices as well. You'll notice that there's a flash sub menu beside the text sub menu. Now the only thing is that these do not automatically connect like the text speech bubbles do. So that's what you have to remember is under text, they have these certain menus and under flash, they have these like certain options in the menu and they do not automatically group. So you do have to keep that in mind when you are moving your layers around, but like it's easy to fix. All you have to do is just reposition one and then the other. So one more time for everyone in the back, make a speech bubble. Fill the speech bubble with text, add a tail. That is it. That is the secret sauce and it's all in one menu. And you of course can move that all around with the operation tool that is also found on the left hand toolbar. 
And with that, you can like modify it, make it a bit more unique the way it looks. Tails are something that you can always have fun with and experiment with because sometimes you want them to be skinny, sometimes you want them to be a bit thicker, sometimes you want them to come from a certain angle. So don't be afraid to like undo that and then do it again and again until the right line just appears. The very cool thing about Clip Studio EX is that it comes with pre-assembled assets in your materials menu. So I've gone into the manga material menu and I've just dragged over a speech bubble that looks kind of like shock or surprise or yelling. And then I've added a tail and I'm gonna do the same thing as I'm going to grab one more from the material menu, kind of adjust the size and then I'll add a tail and then I will add text to that. And it's so incredibly intuitive. I love how everything is just kind of available and built in with Clip Studio EX. It's really a great tool. Once in a while, you will come across it where you can't combine the speech bubbles the way that you want to, but I mean, that's fairly easy to fix if you just think about it. So like for instance here, one speech bubble overlaps the other, but I want them to connect. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to like rasterize the layers and I'm going to draw over top of it with a white brush or I'm going to at least, at the very least, erase the line connecting them and that way it looks like it's connected exactly how I want it to. Voila! Thank you guys for watching! I hope you learned something and don't forget if you want to see how to do this in Photoshop that is in the link below you can check out last week's video. And come by every week because there's a new video every Wednesday. Thanks guys! Nagemist!